Good happy Sunday afternoon. I'm Riley King and welcome to Politics with Riley King. Let's begin. First up, Warren discussed voting rights, universal child care in swing through New Hampshire. With more on that, let's listen to WMUR News 9, Siobhan Lopez. At Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. It's nice to meet you, Ellie. Yeah, my real name is Elizabeth, too. Whoa! <laughs> Speaking to a packed room at Plymouth State University, Senator Elizabeth Warren takes questions from students, one who has a ways to go until college, but asked Warren if she would fix our democracy. I want you to have a voice in Washington that's every bit as loud as any billionaire in this country. The senator from Massachusetts talked about her plans for structural change to continue her fight for working families. This week, the Democratic field continued to grow with the addition of Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, who won the New Hampshire primary in 2016 by a landslide. In a one-on-one -on -one interview, Warren called Sanders an old friend and welcomed him to the race. The way I look at it is it gives us a chance to talk about more ideas. You know, right now, the Democrats are out there talking about how we want to make change and the kind of change we want to make. The senator stopped in at some small businesses in downtown Laconia talking to the business owners and getting some one-on-one -on -one time with voters. As a business owner, I have a lot of employees actually that can't afford child care for their children and it's been a big issue for hiring in an office right now. Warren discussed her plan for universal child care. Lots more productivity, lots more people able to work who want to work. And at a Laconia house party. Warren addressed questions about what her strategy will be to avoid negativity, specifically from President Trump. I think that, in some ways, is the biggest punishment to the guy who always wants to be in the spotlight. It's just turn the spotlight off. Siobhan Lopez, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Climate change, key issue for presidential candidates. As announced, and potential presidential candidates increase their visit to New Hampshire, one of the top topics in their stump speeches is climate change. At a political eggs event Tuesday, California U.S. Senator Kamala Harris said it's time to develop a sense of urgency about climate change and issue she called an existential threat to humanity. During an interview on Close Up, Ohio U.S. Rep. Tim Ryan, who is considering a 2020 campaign, said climate policy needs to be reformed to show its benefits to working people. In Goffstown, Minnesota U.S. Senator Amy Kullenbach told voters that she would rejoin the Paris Climate Accord on the first day of her presidency. As he considered a Republican primary challenger to President Donald Trump, former Massachusetts Governor Bill Weld said he's also on board with rejoining the Paris Climate Accord. But when it comes to reducing carbon emissions, he said wealth nations need to consider the needs of the developing world. 
New Jersey U.S. Senator Cory Booker and author Marianne Williamson also highlighted the issue during their visits and more contenders heading to New Hampshire this weekend plan to do the same as well. Independent Bernie Sanders to put in writing that he's a bona fide Democrat. When Bernie Sanders announced his presidential candidacy earlier this week, he verbally reframed his comment to the Democratic Party despite being an independent. Now he will take it a step further and will put it in writing. New Hampshire House Committee votes in favor of recreational marijuana legalization. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. At Beltates, customers will find everything they need for a building project. The brand names you trust to perform. And with a fleet of over 50 delivery vehicles, we deliver when and where our customers need them. Beltates Building Products. Nine locations throughout New Hampshire and Massachusetts. A bill to legalize recreational marijuana is on its way to the House floor in Concord. Yesterday, the House Criminal Justice Committee voted 10 to 9 in favor of House Bill 481, which would end cannabis prohibition for adults over 21. While similar legislation has passed the House before, it has never received a positive recommendation in committee, a sign that activists are hoping means that this is their year. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Senate unanimously passes bill to protect New Hampshire businesses from paying sales tax to other states. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9, Gene Mackin. And sorry about that, we're having issues with that video. New Hampshire Senate has unanimously passed a bill to protect businesses from out-of-state traditions attempting to pose as sales tax on those companies. The bill was the result of a U.S. Supreme Court ruling last year that said states can require online retailers to collect sales tax on purchases in states where they don't have a physical presence. The ruling was considered and confusing and costly one for many retailers in New Hampshire which doesn't have a sales tax. With online sales steadily increasing a lot at stake nationwide. The U.S. Census Bureau said that in just a three-month time frame last year, online sales made up more than 9% of all sales in the U.S., more than $121 billion. That figure has more than doubled since 2009. The bill prohibits states from imposing tax on sellers in New Hampshire unless they register with and provide notice to the Attorney General's office. It also prohibits sellers in New Hampshire from providing private customer information to outside taxing authorities for determining liability 
to collect sales tax unless the seller has provided a written notice of the request to the Attorney General's office. A similar bill passed in the Senate last year, but it died in the House during a special session last September, with concerns that the bill could be found unconstitutional. Saucy said the fate could be different now that Democrats have the majority in both chambers. Governor Chris Sununu has said he would forcefully protect New Hampshire's sales tax-free status. Absolutely prepared to sue administration if Mueller report not public top dem. We are going to share this information with public, Rep. Adam Schiffer said. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Schiffer said that his committee would subpoena Special Counsel Robert Mueller's final report and even call him to testify before the committee if the report was not made public and that he was absolutely prepared to sue the Trump administration if necessary. And that is it for this edition of Politics with Riley King. I hope you all enjoyed this edition of Politics with Riley King. I'll see you back here next Sunday for another edition of Politics with Riley King. Have a great week, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Goodbye, everyone.